Good morning. Welcome to Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Krieger. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. And today we're reading from John 11. Uh, and what we're reading here is the seventh of, of the great signs in the Gospel of John that proved that Jesus was the Messiah, that he was the one that we've been waiting for. Uh, he turned water into wine. He healed an official son who was sick with fever and near death. He healed a man who was paralyzed. He fed 5,000 people uh, with a little bit of fish and, and bread. Uh, he walked on water, and he healed a man who was born blind. But what we're going to read today is the greatest of all of them. The background is, is that Jesus' friend Lazarus was sick. Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, had sent a message to Jesus asking him to come. And he did, but not right away. Uh, he told his disciples right away, this sickness will not end in death. But then he waited two days before he started heading in that direction. This is John chapter 11. We're going to start at uh, verse 17. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to, Mary, to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus, Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who belie believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. I'm going to skip ahead here uh, to, to verse 38. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad order, for he's been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. This is the gospel of our Lord. This was the greatest, the greatest miracle of Jesus' ministry. And it proved that he has, he has the power to keep the greatest of his promises. Death has been hanging over people's head ever since Adam and Eve brought it into the world in the Garden of Eden. And I'm sure that you know well the misery that it causes. In the middle uh, part of the, the reading, um, the, the part that I, I skipped past, uh, we have what's well, well known as the shortest verse in the Bible. Uh, two words that show Jesus' humanity and also show how he feels about death. Jesus wept. He wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus when he saw the effect that death has on the people that he loves. Not just uh, Lazarus in this case, but also Mary and Martha. He saw them weeping and he wept with them and he promised them that one day even this enemy would be defeated. We have to wonder a little bit maybe about why Jesus allowed things to happen this way. Why did he let Lazarus die? One of those other signs that I mentioned uh, that Jesus had performed, the healing of the official son, he did that without ever going to the place. He did that without ever meeting this boy who was sick. He just told the official, uh, your son will live. And at that moment, the boy's symptoms disappeared. Jesus answered that request from far away. Well, why not this one? 
If he didn't have to physically be there in order to save Lazarus, why didn't he relieve the pain and the grief earlier? Well, I can tell you this. He, he wasn't waiting around for Lazarus to die. You can actually make a compelling argument that Lazarus was already dead by the time the messenger got to Jesus. So this was a trip of about 20 miles, uh, which a, pat, a messenger could have made in a day if he was in a hurry. So imagine this, this timeline. He, he travels for a day. Jesus hears. Jesus waits two more days. Jesus travels a day back. And when he gets there, uh, when he gets there, it, Lazarus has already been in the tomb for four days. And that means that Lazarus may well have died shortly after the messenger left to go get Jesus. Imagine that that messenger making his way back with the message that Jesus was coming and then coming to the conclusion that it didn't really matter if Jesus came or not because it was too late. And that's what Mary and Martha thought. They thought it was too late. Uh, and that and this seems like the, the very reason that Jesus didn't hurry to show the glory of God. They didn't have a reason to expect that Jesus was going to show them this at this time. His promises about the resurrection and life, they were for the future. And as far as those who were concerned, Martha's confidence was rock solid. Uh, when we remember Martha, we often think of her first for her busyness. Um, she was the one who criticized Mary for listening to Jesus instead of helping her work. But let's remember Martha here. This is Martha at her best, at her lowest point, but putting all of her trust in Jesus. On what may well have been the very worst day of her life, she was holding on to Jesus' words. She confessed her faith in everything that Jesus taught. And, and these are things that we, we see the disciples struggling to grasp. And she believed it. She believed in Jesus' promise of a future resurrection. But Jesus didn't make her wait for it. She got to see it with her own eyes without waiting to the last day. Jesus gave a command to a corpse, and the corpse responded. Jesus' words made a dead body alive. And and so we see in that Jesus doesn't just give commands and expect everyone to follow them. He, he actually puts his power in the commands. He gives the power to obey, uh, even when it comes to impossible things. And he does this in us when he calls us to follow him. These are things that we cannot do on our own. We can't decide to be spiritually alive any more than we can decide to be physically alive. But this is what Jesus does in us. And, and hearing this does something in us. Every Christian who has fa stared in the face of death sees that what Jesus offers, he makes happen. He offers without condition and he offers without cost. He offers this eternity in heaven with him. And so your loved ones who have died in faith, Jesus will give them back to you just as he gave Lazarus back to his sisters. And he's going to give life to you too. You will live in the new heaven and the new earth, and you'll be with Jesus, and it's going to cost you absolutely nothing. And this is what allows us to deal with all sorts of trouble in this world, for, from minor annoyances all the way up to the bitter grief of, of losing a loved one, because you know it's all temporary. All of it is temporary. Every trouble you face today, it will not last forever. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and he gives resurrection and life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.